Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video during the second summer 2019 seasonal model roundup. Uh, for today's first video, so we're going to get 13 long range models together. We're going to see what they are all showing for the summer of 2019. Only the second time that we have done this within the summer updates. So, quite an interesting update. We're going to start with the JMA and we'll finish with the UK Met, and you'll see all of the other uh, long range models uh, from the uh, world's leading forecast centres in between so i hope you find video interesting and informative for your saturday morning viewing pleasure just say it can be quite a long video so you can't watch it all in one go we place on the summer updates page with a written summary going over everything that we discuss in the video and uh, that'll be placed on there uh, on the summer updates page for you uh tonight probably around seven o'clock although i've got a very busy day coming up at uh, gas lois today in about the second update, uh, we'll be with you later on, and that's going to be weekend forecast. We'll have a week to 10 day video update as usual, including all of the regular features. And uh, then tonight, we've also got our latest bank holiday weekend update. I think that's update number four. So that's going to be with you tonight. Really, really busy day at uh, Gasworth is today. Uh, all right, so let's get on with it then. We're going to start off by having a look at the JMA. So we isolated this one out a couple of days ago, uh, actually, and went through it on a month-by-month -month basis. Um, and we're not covering the full summer period yet. We're only covering May, June, and July. Next month, we'll have the full June, July, August summer period to go at. But for the moment, uh, we're just a month short of the full summer Nevertheless, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly flowchart for the uh, three monthly period of May, June, and July. Um, and you see that the three months as a whole, anticyclonic signal above average height centered over just the west of the country and pushing the jet stream off to the north uh, as well. It means that temperature and precipitation anomalies are looking like this. Precipitation anomalies are above average, are uh, below average, I should say. So a drier than average May, June and July expected from uh, the JMA. And temperature-wise, it's above average too. So it looks a pretty good three months, actually. Um, remember, these are three monthly anomalies, so you will get periods that deviate from that for a few days, maybe a week or so. But for the three months as a whole, uh, we're talking about an anticyclonic signal with above average heights, high pressure, leading to a relatively warm and dry uh, May, June and July ahead. The uh, mean wind direction, you can see from the black arrows, looks like this. Very variable, and that's because got area of high pressure pretty much over top of the country. So to our south, it's easterly, and to our north, it's westerly. But because we're under this area of high pressure, basically, we've got very variable winds. So this is implying quite a, quite a warm, maybe even quite a hot and dry start to the summer of uh, 2019. Right, we'll go over to Brazil uh, next. So, uh, fr so from Japan through to Brazil, these are the uh, 500 millibar height anomalies uh, for the summer. Now, every other model that we see in this video is going to cover the full summer period. There's going to be no more messing about with being a month early. Every other model now, from now on, will be covering the full summer period. So this would be 500 millibar height anomaly uh for the summer of 2019 from the brazilian model this always does things a little bit differently so blue is extrapolating to above average heights and yellow orange and red extrapolates to below average heights low pressure any other height and omni chart that's always the other way round. so um we sit with a brazilian model we've got an area of above average heights again quite similar to the jma really above average height centered just over or slightly to the west of the country. The jet stream is implied to be pushed off northwards rather like that. And so this is another anticyclonic period coming up if a model is correct. I'm uh, going to flip that over. So that wants to go to June, July, August. This would be temperature anomaly from the Brazilian model for uh, June, July and August. And it's looking like this. So it's coming out above average, a warmer than average summer being forecast there. Hardly surprising 
with such a strong signal for high pressure to be dominant. Now, precipitation wise, it doesn't look too bad, although it is a bit wetter than average to our east. So it implies that we've got an area of above average heights, high pressure sitting over to the west of the country. The jet stream would be doing something a bit like that. So there would be a trough in the 500 millibar flow, but I think it'd be more affecting northern and central northeastern parts of Europe. Overall, not a bad uh, summer being forecast by the Brazilian model there. Going north from Brazil to Canada, this is CANSIPS and its mean sea level pressure anomalies for the summer of 2019. And uh, looking rather mixed, I suppose, uh, uh, below every pressure, low pressure up to the north, high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic. Pressure does look rather weak across many, with those blue curves, across many parts of Europe. So I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say it's an unsettled summer that we've got here, but could be a little bit on the mixed side, actually. Maybe just a little bit of influence from the jet stream, more so than the two models we've just been looking at, perhaps. Temperature anomalies are being forecast to be slightly milder than average across the UK and Ireland through this summer, a rather warmer than average summer coming up. Precipitation anomalies are close to average. So it all looks rather average, really, but compared to the first two models, which are implying quite an anticyclonic and therefore potentially quite a warm, dry summer, uh, this one just looks a little bit a little bit more changeable, a little bit closer to a typical British summer, I suppose. But nothing too bad, uh, I have to say, showing up there. This is the probability uh, forecast for the summer of 2019 from uh, the IRI. I'll just explain that the IRI is the... International Research Institute for Climate and Society, part of Earth Institute at the Columbia University. So this is European uh, temperature probability for the summer of 2019. Most parts of Europe are being forecast to have a warmer than average summer, particularly so in these northern and eastern parts of Europe, even in the west of Europe generally forecast to be above normal with a probability to the UK and Ireland we're just about the coolest places in Europe our probability is kind of like hinting at being around normal but obviously we are very very close to what could be really quite a warm maybe even quite a hot uh, European summer there our precipitation probability from uh, IRI looks like that. Generally, it's hinting at a bit of a drier than average summer for uh, the UK. Uh, so, like 40% probability of um, of a drier than average summer. So, does hint that for uh, sort of northern, northwestern parts of Europe, could be a little bit drier than average. Southern Europe is being forecast to be quite wet, south of Spain, down into Spain and uh, south of France, I should say down into Spain, Portugal. So a rather dry uh, summer being indicated there. And although our probability is coming out close to average, temperature probability is coming out close to average, most parts of Europe are being forecast to have uh, a, a really warm, if not a hot summer. Uh, these are the analogs from Patel Peng. So uh, Patel Peng is working within the umbrella of uh, NOAA, of course, in the uh, United States. So we're going down to North America now uh, for this one from Canada to North America. So um, Patel looks at the sea surface temperature anomalies across the world in any given month. And then he creates an analogs based weather forecast based on those sea surface temperature anomalies. It just so happens that these sea surface temperature anomaly analogs were based, or these analogs were based on the sea surface temperature anomalies during during um, March. So this is the 200 millibar height anomaly from Patel Bang uh, for the summer of 2019. And uh, going from an area of above average heights to be to our south and southwest below average heights in the North Atlantic. Probably quite a westerly summer. And for the north, maybe a little bit unsettled. For the south, probably relatively warm and dry at times. Temperature anomalies are being forecast to be warmer than average for this summer from Patel Peng's analogues, not just for the UK, but for most parts of uh, Europe as well. That's a clear trend, of course, with all the models that we've looked at so far. At least many of them seem to be going for quite a warmish summer. Uh, Precipitation-wise, it does look a little bit unsettled, actually, especially so for northern parts of the country, slightly above average with precipitation anomalies up in the north. 
uh, closer to average elsewhere. Looks like it could be rather changeable summer, particularly so in the north. Maybe Patalpeng sort of um, siding with Kansips to some degree. CFSV2 uh, next. So uh, this is Noah's in-house uh, model from CPC, NCB and NOAA. Uh, this is a 700 millibar height anomaly for uh, the summer of 2019, going for above average heights to be over Scandinavia to our east northeast, which would imply quite an influence from the east or the northeast during this summer. So potentially quite a warm summer, bringing in those uh, east to southeasterly winds. It is going for a warmer than average temperature anomaly for this summer across many parts of Europe and the UK and Ireland are included in that. So quite a warm, if not a fairly hottish summer being forecast by CFSB2 this month. Precipitation wise, it looks uh, driving average across northern Europe, which you expect because there's high pressure up there, of course. Um, a bit wetter than average of France, Spain, Portugal. So maybe implies risk of some thundery areas of low pressure, perhaps down here around Biscay and uh, also into parts of Mediterranean. For the UK and for Ireland, our uh, precipitation anomaly is close to average. So we're between the ridge over Scandinavia and the thundery low that could be across southern Europe, implying we may have quite a, quite a warm, maybe in a fairly hot summer, but there could be influences from thunderstorms at times. Keeping it going, this is the ECMWF mean sea level pressure anomaly. And this is very similar to the JMA, actually. Although, remember, the JMA is only covering um, May, June, July. Whereas this covers the full summer period, summer 2019. It has above average heights over and just to the west of us. Jet streams doing something a bit like that. So it implies an anticyclonic signal for the summer with plenty of dry weather on offer. Temperature anomalies with the ECMWF are being forecast to be milder than average or warmer than average across uh, the UK, Ireland, and in fact, many uh, parts of Europe also being forecast to have a warmer than average summer with that ridge sitting over the northwest of Europe. Precipitation anomalies with the ECMWF model a little bit weaker, um, but overall possibly hinting at a rather dry summer coming up as well. So that looks pretty good summer from the uh, ECM model. Metro France turns up next, and this again means sea level pressure anomalies with no particularly clear signal uh, with this one, so nothing really to work on there. However, it is going for a very warm, if not a hot summer across most parts of Europe. Look at those temperature anomalies really roasting away across many parts of Europe. For the UK and Ireland, they're kind of like one degree above average, but many other parts of Europe are coming out like one to two degrees or more above average so a really hot european summer on the way and the uk and ireland including in that to some degree certainly uh, a much more than average summer being forecast there metro france precipitation again very weak nothing really to work on no uh, particularly evidence signal this is a DWD, the German model, and again, means to have a pressure anomaly is taking the above average heights away to our north and northwest. So this would imply, there's no real low pressure, but you would probably expect low pressure to be around there, across Scandinavia and central parts of Europe. And you'll probably be expecting to pull down for us, rather sort of northwesterly type influences. So maybe uh, not as warm as uh, Metro France is looking. Temperature anomalies are still forecast to be above average. For the UK and for Ireland, we're kind of like uh, average to just a little bit above average. Most other parts of Europe are around a degree above average, but it's not as hot, the DWD, as uh, Metro France. Metro France is going for a really, really warm, if not hot, summer. And again, as you often find with these uh, seasonal models, as far as precipitation is concerned from the DWD, Overall, it's close to average, but it does possibly hint at something a little bit more unsettled, I think, particularly from the mean sea level pressure anomaly. CMCC, which is a Mediterranean uh, model coming up next. So this is quite an interesting mean sea level pressure anomaly. This one has high pressure, kind of like around Greenland and Iceland, but it also has quite a strong extension from the Azores High into Spain and Portugal. Again, no particularly evident area of low pressure, but we could be bringing in a jet stream 
in between. So it might be a rather unsettled signal, actually, uh, for the summer. Temperature anomalies are looking a lot cooler. This is the coolest of the Copernicus suite of models. Um, so just very close to average or no signal, really, with temperature anomalies for the UK and Ireland. In fact, many parts of Europe are included in that, too. Precipitation-wise, it does look as though it could be a little bit unsettled for the UK. Only very weak signal, but very, very weakly unsettled for uh, the UK, perhaps. Out to the northwest, you see it's drier, close to Iceland, which implies high pressures out towards the north and west of the UK this summer, which is not a particularly good place for high pressure to be, because if you've got high pressure there, then you're going to probably get low pressure underneath it around there and the jet stream. Uh, will do something a little bit like that. You'll get a trough within the 500 millibar flow. So I think that's probably the coolest and most unsettled of the Copernicus suite of models of CMCC, although DWD kind of hints at something similar too. Right, we're getting close to the end now. This is Jamstech. This is the uh, temperature anomaly for the summer of uh, 2019 from Jamstech. It's going warmer than average. I think last month this was one of the few models to go for colder than average summer, but it's flipped on that, going warmer than average now uh, for the UK, for Ireland, for most parts of Central and Northern Europe, although Scandinavia is forecast to be a little bit colder than average, but quite a warm summer being forecast there from Jamstech this month. Precipitation-wise, also looking pretty dry. So that's a very nice summer. If you like warm, dry weather, um, it's going for quite a lot of dry and uh, warm, maybe even fairly hot conditions across the west, uh, particularly the west of Europe. And then we're going through to the Beijing Climate Centre. So uh, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly from the uh, Beijing Climate Centre. This is how it's looking, and it's looking really, really good. It's placing an area, really, really good if you like, dry weather and hot weather, placing an area of high pressure almost over top of the UK, which would be sending the jet stream north. The jet stream would be going off up there somewhere. Uh, that's about as good as it gets if you want a hot summer, really. That's very similar to the kind of pattern we had last summer. Actually, you see how the ridge is extending from America across the Atlantic into Ireland or towards Ireland, then into the UK, and then even over here, extending into central parts of Europe. All the time, a jet stream is pushed off up there. So that's as good as it gets if you want warm, hot, dry conditions uh, this summer. Temperature anomalies, therefore, from the Beijing Climate Centre have been forecast to be significantly above average, not just for the UK, but for most parts of Europe too. It is going for a very warm and uh, potentially very uh, dry summer. There's the uh, precipitation anomaly, and it is significantly drier than average with the Beijing Climate Centre. So... It is a little bit of a trend, actually, uh, in this second update. Not all models, by any means, are going for this, but there are several of them that are going for high-pressure-dominated summer conditions, leading to the chance, anyway, of a significantly warmer, significantly hotter, and drier than average uh, summer. Finally, we come to our very own UK Met Office Glow C5 uh, model. This is mean sea level pressure anomalies from Glow C5 uh, for the summer of 2019. It's a rather a bizarre looking pattern. Doesn't uh, hint that there's some high pressure up towards uh, Greenland and Iceland. Otherwise, not a huge amount, amount else to work on. The temperature anomaly, and this is one of the few models that's actually on the cool side. It is rather cool, really, the temperature anomaly. Doesn't really go um, convincingly below average, but it's certainly at the cooler end of these long range models for the temperature anomaly for this summer. But perhaps most significantly is that it's going for quite a wet summer, quite an unsettled summer. It wasn't particularly evident from the 500, from the mean cell pressure anomaly, but the precipitation anomaly is coming out above average there uh, for not just the UK, but for many northern parts of Europe. Um, potentially... Just potentially ending this second uh, summer 2019 season model round upon a little bit of a disappointing 
note. So I think we've got a bit of a split here between these models. We have got several of these long-range models this month that are going for a anti-cyclonic, hotter, drier summer. And they do include some really high-end models. So some models that we have right at the top end, like the ECFWF and the Beijing Climate Centre. Um, so those ones looking at really anti-cyclonic, uh, hot, dry summer being indicated, but we have got several also that are much more unsettled. None of them are going for a particularly cold summer, but uh, some of them are at the lower end of uh, the temperature scale, kind of like average to just a little bit above average, and rather more unsettled. And within that, we have to include um, the UK Met Office uh, within those sorts of models that are a little bit more uh, unsettled. And some of the ones from Copernicus uh, as well, particularly DWD and uh, that Mediterranean model. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, but I really don't think it's too bad an update, to be honest. If you want um, a, a repeat or if you want a second warm summer uh, following 2018, if you want like back-to-back -back warm, hot, dry summers, then it's not a bad update because there are several of the models that are going in that sort of direction. And considering this is only update number two, we've still got update number three to go. We do that at the end of May and maybe by then a lot of these other models are a little bit uh, a little bit unsure about um, uh, a hotter, drier summer. Maybe those other models will come on board. The other uh, the other side of that, though, is that the models like Beijing Climate Center and the ECMWF that are warmer and drier for this update, they might flip cooler and more unsettled next month. So I think the third update really is going to be key uh, for this to see which way things go. But things do look pretty poised there for uh, the chance, anyway, of uh, a summer that really isn't too bad at all if you want uh, warm, dry, dare I say even hot, dry conditions. We shall see. Right, this update will be this video will be placed on the summer updates of Thorgast page with a written summary going over everything that we discussed in the video. Uh, later on today, that'll be coming up this evening. Um, between now and then, we've got loads of updates. We get forecasts as always on a Saturday, uh, week to 10 day video update with all your regular features, and we'll be having a bank holiday weekend update this evening too. Busy old day of it, and tomorrow it doesn't stop because we've got some more summer analogues and the Galsworth is certainly round up with you tomorrow as well. It's all happening at the website. Keep checking back to all of the updates, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.